This is 5.0, the future for property consultants. Where is the world heading? What impact will it have on business? And what does it mean for the future for property consultancies? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. To understand this a bit more, it's probably easy to look back over the last few centuries to see how humans have, have been affected when we've had a major shift in how, how the world operates. Because you'll see, as we get deeper into this, what's happening right now, and actually what's been happening over the last decade has been like the seed to what we'll experience in the next, next few years. Every time that we've gone through a big change in how we earn money, this has changed how we live our life massively. For some people, their way of earning money has disappeared completely. And you might see the same comparison in what's happening now. But let's look at an example. So if you think back a few hundred years, we had the agricultural age. This was what we would call business 2.0. Then we moved into the industrial age with the industrial revolution. We call this the industrial age or business 3.0. The industrial age lasted for a long time until in the early 21st century when we got the information age and this was business 4.0. In the agricultural age, a large portion of the economy was made up by farming based businesses. And they do everything by hand or they use horses, horses or cattle. And many of the jobs back then in all industries were done by people physically doing whatever it was that they had to do. You might say it was the time of, of real hard physical work. But when the world developed machines and mechanical ways to do things, suddenly all those farm workers and everyone that earned their money by exchanging their physical sweat for money, suddenly they found themselves unable to earn a wage because it was cheaper for the farmer or the mill owner to buy the machinery rather than employ hundreds of people. Now, obviously, from this, new jobs were created that hadn't existed before that time, such as people to build the machinery and people to operate that machinery. So this, this, is, this is when we had the rise of the various mills, such as the cotton and lace mills. Then we started to see steam powered machines. And later, around the start of the 20th century, we started to get, get the petrol and diesel, di diesel combustion engines that we know of today. For the last 20 years or so, we've been in the information age. And if you look around, we're swamped with information. We have so much information, we don't know what to do with it. You've got the answer to anything just by looking on Google. But Business 5.0 is about the next step, moving on from, what, from, from the information age. And again, as with each time, when it's happened in the past, there will be millions of people that can no longer earn money how they'd previously learned it in the past. We can already see signs of that now if we think about self-driving cars, self-driving trucks and, and delivery drones. The first stepping stone toward business 5.0 happened through convenience. You can see examples of this from the death of the high street, moving to online shopping through places like Amazon. And then more recently, we've moved towards shopping online for, for our food from supermarkets as well. Ultimately, we'll end up with big warehouses out of town where our shopping and everything we buy will, will all be just picked by robots and then delivered by drones. A bit like what Amazon already have, but on a much bigger scale. But you can see the con convenience factor and going from physical to virtual is just that stepping stone. Rather than what people think at the time of it being the new normal for that industry. You might have seen the same pattern occurring with taxis over the last decade. First of all, it went to the convenience of booking a taxi through an app. And we saw the huge rise in these taxi apps like Uber and Get, which, which meant the process of using these apps made the actual taxi company redundant because everything was done through software. Now, with self-driving cars on the way, this removes the need for the driver of the taxi as well. But again, it all starts or it all started with, with a move toward convenience for the customer. You see the same thing happening with events online, whether it's virtual networking events or even attending through a, through a VR headset. But again, it's moved from that physical to virtual. And while we still have the, the physical experience in some cases, you can look at the high street and say, we still have shops. But look at, look at how those shops struggle to survive. And for them, shops like WH Smith, if they don't drastically change their business model from a traditional shop to something offering an experience, then its retail business will also die 
within the next few years. Can you remember our price or Virgin Megastores? There's a reason that record shops don't exist anymore. It's because people have changed how they buy and how they listen to music. Business 5.0 is about moving more towards AI and virtual worlds, automating how we do things and letting robots or computers do that do the heavy lifting part of our jobs. So we know that's where we're heading and most people working on this technology predict it will happen between 2025 and 2030. A lot of this is already in place now, it's, it's just not live yet. It needs other things in place such as uh, 5G networks so that it can work properly. When all these other pieces are in place, then it'll all come together. And, and that's why the, the sale, it'll be, it'll be around 2025 when these supporting pieces are actually in place. The question isn't about whether it will come or not. It's already here. The question is when it will go live. For some people, this is like a ticking time bomb. So how will it affect your job? I'd say we all need to think differently, differently about how we do things from now on. Because even if we don't think automation will affect what we do directly, there will be waves that hit other industries that will have a, a rebound effect and impact completely unrelated industries. Most businesses have been operating, operating the same way for the last two or three centuries. In traditional businesses like accountants, plumbers, hairdressers, hotels, all these types of businesses, they haven't evolved how they operate. Their business model is the same or almost the same as it was over a century ago. But these business models were created for a time that no longer exists. Business 5.0 is less about competing and more about collaboration, especially for small businesses and the organizations that support them. The old way of doing things is we believe that we all have to build this huge company where we employ loads of staff and we do everything ourselves or, or it's all done in-house. And then we fight to the death with our competitors, often squeezing our profit margins to the bone, all so that we can keep those staff employed and so we can keep polishing our egos. It's a very caveman way of thinking about business. The first problem with this old way of thinking is to employ all these people, we need to have loads of money just sitting around so that we can afford to pay them. If those people aren't delivering anything to the client, they aren't chargeable. And so they're just a massive overhead, draining money from the business every month. If you start a business, it could probably take decades to get to that point if you ever get there at all. Or you have to go out and raise all that money so that you can, you can build that almighty kingdom for yourself. And that is just a really bad way and an inefficient way of growing or running a business. <coughs> the second problem, if we're doing everything ourselves, it takes a our focus away from our core business. In other words, serving our customers and we end up with poor or just average results for everything else then comes a problem we've seen a huge shift in people leaving their employers to go self-employed and start up their own business now this leaves a massive shortage of people to be employees so it's just not possible to operate a business in this way anymore the issue with all these people going self-employed is most of those will still be in that mindset of not having any money so instead they try to do everything themselves when they should be focusing on, on what they do best in other cases, they'll spend money on training courses, learning things that they should leave to other people that are more suited to those type of roles. A good example, I was talking to a friend that provides IT support for businesses. Her personality is very introverted. She doesn't really like talking to strangers, but she just attended a five-day training course to learn how to improve her sales skills. Now, it, do, it doesn't matter how many days training she gets. If she doesn't have the right type of personality or, she, or if she's missing some other natural skill set, she's never going to win Salesperson of the Year Award. But this is what we'll start to, to, to wake up to in the next few years. Rather than just attending these training courses or trying to be someone that we're not, we'll start to ask ourselves, why are we trying to do everything ourselves? Why are we learning to do something that we actually don't want to do? 
especially when there are people out there that can do it much better than we could. If you think of the various roles in a company and then imagine that these people have all left that business to go and set up their own business. Suddenly you've got a salesperson that's excellent at selling, but rubbish at everything else. You've got the plumber that's excellent at installing new bathroom suites, but rubbish at everything else. You've got all these people that are excellent at what they do, but rubbish at everything else. So wouldn't it make sense for those different pieces to team up together and then just focus on what they do best? Let's look at it from your perspective. As a property consultant, your value is created by connecting the client to the solution that they want. If, if we think about this like a, a part of a business, you would be like the technical delivery role. Your value to the world is in being the expert for what your client needs. It's, it's what you know. And knowing when and how to deliver it in the most efficient way. You aren't the hard salesy type. You aren't giving them, them the hard sell trying to close the deal in the next five minutes. Your value comes by you always keeping your eye on the, on the latest innovations happening in the market and knowing what the latest regulations are. So how does Business 5.0 work for a property consultant? I personally think online shopping was the start of the end for, for product-based businesses. When online shopping came along, it became a lot easier to get what you wanted without having to go anywhere. You have access to a huge catalog of products without having to go and collect them yourself. As with the other industries, the shift started as a move toward convenience. And we'll continue to see all delivery type businesses like property consultants, these roles will be replaced partly by robots and automation, but more immediately by much larger corporations. The problem is, if you don't evolve into this new way of working, we'll see a lot of property consultants go out of business over the next few years. Every industry has four seasons, just like we have throughout the year. The spring is when new industries are born or old industries get redesigned. The summer is when those industries grow. The autumn is when consolidation happens and, and, and large groups emerge that dominate the industry. And then winter is, is when the industry is declining. It, it's, it's in its death phase. Right now, as you'll probably see for yourself from what we've, we've been talking about, the property consultant model is currently in its autumn season as large companies that, that offer everything under one roof are taking more of the market. And soon we'll move into the winter season and we, we see more people being replaced by automation and robots. Your focus in the business 5.0 age should be understanding where your value is and then building your business around that. And that's how you, you'll stay relevant when the rest of the industry has been automated. You have to almost forget everything you do now and completely rethink how you're going to make money. I'm not saying you should immediately, immediately drop everything you're doing. You can keep that ticking over in the background, but just don't be thinking that, that you're going to grow your current business over the next five or 10 years by using the current format of what you do. It's about completely shifting your business model and how you see the value you, that you're creating for your network. It's not your job to try and create new things to sell to your audience. That's where people waste time and money. Remember, your skill and your value is created from what you know and understanding how to, de to deliver what those people need. It's not from creating new things to sell them. The next step is to build that connection with each of your clients and get to know what they need. They need to think of you like that concierge. That, uh, the person that can get them anything they need or connect them with whoever they want to speak to. If you were trying to get tickets to the latest musical on Broadway, you wouldn't just randomly go knocking on doors asking if anyone has a spare ticket. You'd go and ask the hotel concierge and they'd get the ticket on your behalf because it's their job to know exactly who to speak to. This is the same for you. You are that connector. You are connecting them with the end result. Your value is in what you know, 
the real value you provide to your network is the ability to take them from where they are now to where they want to go and do that by using the latest innovation and solution that's in the market. Your best strategy as a property consultant in the business 5.0 age is to team up with those other pieces. The pieces that mean you can be like that large corporate business, but more importantly, the pieces that let you focus on delivering that solution rather than worrying about the other parts of the business, like how to improve sales or managing your finances. It's the pieces that will help you add value to your clients. Imagine for a second how much easier your life would be as a business owner if you had a sales expert managing all of your sales. Or if you had an investor providing the money you needed to keep growing your business. And if you had someone to keep creating new product offerings to keep your business relevant. It's almost impossible to have all of these pieces in a small business. At best, you end up with just average people. This is, the, this is the old way of working. But if all these people were independent, each, each were superstars at what they do, and each focusing on what they do best, imagine how much more powerful your business would be. But one final question I want to leave you with. How can you improve that relationship with your existing clients? And how can you add value to those relationships?